Hello and welcome to this brief overview of Dynamics 365 for financials. Those of you who are currently using Office 365 will notice when you log in you have a number of tiles or apps as they're called. Uh, that's mail, calendar, so on and so forth. One of the new links is Dynamics 365 which is the new name for Dynamics CRM Online 2017. So the thought process behind Microsoft introducing Dynamics 365 for financials is along the lines of sharing data, improving functionality, and the ability to have everything in one place. So the thought process behind the Internet of Things is anything such as a phone or a tablet or a laptop, a television, that can consume, transfer, or receive data can talk to another application, laptop, phone, or computer that can receive data. With this in mind, it's greater communication between any kinds of device. So Dynamics 365 for Financials is designed to be within the cloud offering that your organization has, linked to Mail, to Yammer, to your CRM. So just to give you a navigation around Dynamics 365 Financials, I've already logged in, and here is my setup. So the first time you log in, you're presented with your home page, and the home page can be tailored to what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You'll notice I have a number of activities, and it's broken down into sales and purchases. I can show and hide these to whichever fits my day-to-day -day role. And all of these are simply tiles which link to other windows to enable you to drill down to have a look at records. I have a number of on-screen reports, which again I can drill down from. And you'll notice that in a majority of the windows, you'll see an edit in Excel function. And it's exactly that. It enables you to edit, upload, and change records directly from within Excel. I have shortcuts to specific tasks I want to do. So let's say I want to do a purchase invoice. I click on my tile, and it opens up a specific purchase invoice. Same for sales, orders, and quotes. I can inquire against specific nominal codes and again drill down and show my entries. I also have a very, very simple trial balance and again I have full drill down. Also within my home page, I have links to financial reports. So if I want to do a very, very simple balance sheet, I simply click on balance sheet. I can enter it against budget information and I can send it to PDF or Word or Excel or schedule. So once again, you've got that full integration with the office. And then we have a balance sheet in PDF format. From a navigation perspective, I've got very, very simple shortcuts to open up my customers. And again, I can view everything that relates to my customers as a whole, any invoices, individual balances. I can do a trial balance of, of my customers directly from here, which again, I can send straight to PDF. I've got a list of my suppliers, same principle applies. And from here I can actually create transactions as well. So if I want to put an invoice on for that one particular supplier. And a list of my stock items that I sell as well. So you've got a nice catalogue, very, very easy to, to import pictures, catalogues, so on and so forth. 
Further drill down on the navigation pane, I can see it's broken down. So I've got my finance information, so I can make payments from within here. I can print a detailed trial balance. I can process journals, bank reconciliation, cash receipts. I can amend my chart of accounts very, very easily. And again, full drill down available within here. Under my sales, I can do quotes, orders, invoices, manage my customer balances. I can send specific transactions or customers through for approval. On purchasing, I can do my purchase orders. I can do invoices. And again, I can monitor my supplier balances, how many invoices have gone through, what the current rate is. As I said before, you can send payments, invoices, suppliers, customers through for approvals and different levels of approvals. That's all done via email. And should you have any approvals waiting for you to action, these will all appear within your approvals page. I can do budgets, cash flows, fixed assets very easily. And if I need to process timesheets, expenses, so on and so forth, I can process those through my self-service. One thing that's very, very handy is the setup. And there's an assisted setup routine which ensures that you follow steps that you need to complete in order to be able to use the system. You see I've done a number of these and they flag them as completed. And each of the ones you need to follow are simple wizards. Should you wish to be a little bit more detailed in that, you can also then go through and do a manual setup on different areas within the system. You can create links to other applications, to CRM, to PayPal, elements such as that. So very, very simple to navigate your way around and also very, very simple to set up. So just to show you some of the functionality and, and some of the things you can actually do is I'm going to create a quote directly from Outlook, which will then feed through to Dynamics 365 for financials at the same time. So I've already logged into my Outlook and I'm just going to click on new to create a new email. So down the bottom here, you'll see I have a number of icons which relate to Dynamics 365 for financials. I'm going to click on that one. And so what would I like to do? Would I like to have a look at my contacts? Or do I want to create a new transaction? So I'm going to create a new quote. And that will then link to the system and present me with a list of my customers. So I'm just going to choose Alpine Ski House. And you'll see as soon as I've chosen the customer, it populates the contact information for me. I'm going to buy from my list of items. I'm going to buy desk. And once I've popped all the information in, you will then see down below, I have a total amount of the invoice, and I can add in payment terms, payment method, currency, so on and so forth. So I'm happy with that quote, and I'm just going to pop that into my email. And there we have my sales quote information with all the details I need built within it. Just before I send that, I'm just going to check to have a look and see what the customer's balance is like. So once again, this is linking directly into the system. So I see I've got a fair few records which are actually overdue. I've also got nice little diagrams and also a link to the amount of transactions for that one particular customer. I can also check the bank accounts and open up all the individual entries for them. But for the time being, I'm happy with that, and I'm just going to send that. So on sending, that will have sent it through to my Dynamics 365 for financials, and I'm just going to look at my customers. And you'll see my Alpine Ski House has got a greater balance, so I can click on them. And you see I have a number of ongoing quotes. 
So here we have all the quotes that have gone through. Here we see I have my Athens desk. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to transfer that as an invoice, which I can now see. And I could potentially send that for approval to line manager, budget holder, so on and so forth. I'm happy with that. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to send that directly to the customer. And I'm going to send this in an email so I can show you how the email looks. So here we have a copy of the invoice in the email format and you would just type in contact details. So I can't send this, so it's going to ask me if I want to open it. And here's a copy of my invoice. Now, if I had set up a link to a payment method, what I would have is a shortcut built onto the invoice to link me directly to my payment methodology, whether that be PayPal, so on and so forth, where the, cu where the customer could pay that invoice directly from a shortcut on the invoice itself. So this is just a, a quick navigation around Dynamics 365 for financials and some of the things you can do. If you have any further questions, please get in contact with your Advantage account manager. I thank you very much for your time.